Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. Today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, about screen game on offense. Uh, I got uh, got an email from uh, from a coach that checks out uh, checks out our website, and he was interested in, in uh, talking a little bit about the screen game. And I think the last uh, last blog we did talked a little bit about the package screenplay with a five step concept on one side and a screen on the other, and um, so. You know, from that message, I, I figured uh, if somebody wanted to hear about the screen game, we might as well talk a little bit about uh, about screen game in general and how you can use it in your offense. Um, we haven't always been the greatest screen team. Uh, you know, in my opinion, I think uh, you know a couple of reasons. You know, number one, I don't think we spent as much time on it. Um, you know, that that was the that was the big thing. I just don't think we put enough time and effort into it. Um, number two, I don't think our style of play was as conducive to the screen game in general because when you're an up-tempo team, a lot of the times you're not, you know, if you're doing tempo right and you're running your offense at the pace you want to run it, you know, mid to late game, you're not getting the same pass rush you were getting, so the screen game is really not as effective. So I think our style of play hurt us a little bit. Um, but, I, but I think those two things, you know, probably more the execution of the screen game because we didn't put enough time and effort into it. And then the style of play or our pace of play and our tempo I don't think really matches up real well um, with the screen game simply because we don't get the same pass rush. But, uh, you know, in general, we still use the screen game. I think we're a good screen team. Um, I wouldn't say we're a great screen team. We've been effective at times, and it's been, uh, you know, it's been a big part of some, some good wins for us in the past. And, uh, but, but one of the reasons we really use it is it, it, it's part of our – plan of attack with the up-tempo offense, it's a way to get defenses to have to run sideline to sideline. And, you know, early on when you're screening teams, what you're really trying to do is not only are you trying to have effective football plays, I think any time you call a play on offense, you want it to be an effective play. I don't think you ever call a play, you know, that sets up just to be something that you use to set up another play or something that you use to make the defense run. You still want to have a good football play. All right, but at the end of the day, as an up-tempo team, the screen game is something that you want to do early to get defensive linemen and linebackers to have to run from sideline to sideline. And even if it isn't effective as a football play, in other words, if you throw screens and maybe only get a yard or two and they're not you know, big, big, big gains, it's still as effective as, a, as an up-tempo team if you're getting that team to run sideline to sideline while making them line up and play every 15 to 17 seconds or you know, sometimes maybe faster, sometimes slower. But I think it's an effective part of the up-tempo offense because you're getting guys to run sideline to sideline. You know, so again, obviously when you're calling screens, whether you're just trying to get the ball to one of your playmakers in space or if you're actually setting up, you know, a slower type screen that's going to be blocked a certain way that you're actually blocking, you know, with enough people out there to try and, you know, hit yourself a 15 to 50, 60 yard play, you're still also doing those things within the tempo of your offense to effectively wear out the defense. So there's a lot of reasons why you would run, you know, screen games or why you would call screens. You know, but at the end of the day, I think as an offense, one of the things you got to think about is anytime you call a play, it's because you want it to be a play that either moves the chain, scores points, or you know, gets you yardage and keeps your offense on the field. All right. But philosophically speaking, there are other reasons to run screens. So. What I'd like to go through today are just some of the more common, typical screens. Um, you know what they are, what they mean when people talk about them, um, and then we'll uh, you know we'll actually draw some of them up, some of the ones that we use, and just go through some of the, the you know the smaller specifics of things that I think can help within the screen game. All right, so first thing I got up here is is you know four of the terms or the types of screens that you're going to hear. Not everybody uses the term, the same terminology. So I'm going to try and throw out as many terms as possible that you may hear or have heard people use before. So maybe you can tie up some loose ends when you're studying material or, or watching games and you hear commentators or different guys talking about the screen game. First one is bubble or leverage screens. Bubble or leverage screens are screens where you're throwing it to a wide out that is running away from the football, all right, east or west, not north and south. He's running away from the football, east or west, left or right, sideline to sideline. So in other words, you're trying to get leverage on the defense by getting guys outside. 
Now these aren't generally screens where maybe you're releasing a ton of linemen or you're not setting them up with your linemen to get downfield. They're screens that you're trying to get the ball out wide to out leverage the defense. All right? And sometimes they're predetermined where you're grabbing the ball and throwing bubble screen to a number two or a number three. Okay. Sometimes they're part of an option or a zone game read where, you know, for us when we run our key screen game, it's part of a triple option package, so it's not a initial leverage type read where we're going to read the leverage of a defender and throw the screen based on his leverage and where we have numbers. We're actually going to read it as a triple option to where we're going to read an end first and then a force player second, and we're going to take a wide receiver and back him out with width so that he essentially becomes the pitch player in the option game. All right, but there are some bubble type screens that are leverage screens where based on the deployment and the leverage of the defense, the quarterback might have the ability to grip and rip that throw even though his offensive line or, or his running backs are, you know, they might be running inside zone or power, but based on where those defenders are to the bubble screen side, he's got leverage right away. So those would be your bubble screens or your leverage screens. If you were in two by two, you might throw the bubble. If you're playing against a too high team and they don't want to apex or walk out their outside linebackers, they're keeping them tighter to the box, all right, and they're trying to play run with those overhang players and stay too high, you might throw the bubble to number two, see if you can get your receiver to handle corner, and now what you're trying to do is you're trying to get that apex player or that outside linebacker down safety, you're trying to get them to remove from the box by pushing with quickly and getting the ball to a player in space. If you're in three by one, you may be throwing bubbles to number three with two blockers out there with a helmet on a helmet to where now you've got some numbers and you're trying to get leverage to the outside and you've got numbers to block it depending on how they're playing. All right, and you're getting the ball to a playmaker in space. So they're bubble or leverage type screens, okay? Then you have what stand-ups or now screens, okay? Stand-up or now screens is when you're going to grip and rip the ball to a receiver who's basically just going to turn and show you his numbers, okay? Maybe he'll go fast hands and fast feet where when he comes off the ball, his feet and his hands are going to move as fast as they can within a yard or two to sell like he's running down the field, but then he's just going to stand up. He's not going to come back inside to the ball. He's not running wider like a bubble. He's just going fast hands and feet, showing himself and flashing his numbers to the quarterback. All right? Those are screens where you're just trying to get the ball out into a playmaker's hands. All right? You have to have the right numbers because you're not moving him wider and circling the defense with leverage. So it's got to be a screen where you have at least one blocker out there, all right? Or it's an uncovered type screen where a guy is uncovered and you might have, you know, you might have a call in your offense where the quarterback, hand signal call, whatever it is, if they leave a guy uncovered in the slot, you might just turn and rip him the ball right now, all right? But usually stand-ups or nows are involved where you usually just have wide receivers blocking, might only be one receiver out there blocking. You don't, you know, we throw one version of a stand-up where we try and get the front side guard out there. Um, he doesn't always get out there. This past season we ran a real good one for a touchdown, about 30 yards, where the guard actually did get out there and he was able to clean somebody up. After the receiver caught the ball and made an initial move, that guard was able to get out there and, and clean a guy up at the second level to, to kind of spring it for a touchdown. So we will try and get a guard out on stand-ups, but because of where the guard is and how quickly the ball gets thrown outside, you know, a lot of times he may never get there, but we're not trying to release guard center guard or tackle guard or anybody else to get out in front. We're just trying to grip and rip to a stand-up X, H, Y, Z, all right? Maybe you get a corner, you know, a lot of times if you've got a real good receiver and the corner is seven yards off or eight yards off and bailing on the snap and he's got no help underneath, you know, you grab and throw that ball right now and put it in, in one of your better player's hands and let him make somebody miss. So your stand-ups and your nows are screens where you're physically gripping and ripping the ball as soon as you get in and throwing to a guy who's basically just flashing numbers not a ton of blockers out in front of them. It's not set up or, you know, you don't really set it up with blockers to execute where you have, you know, three, four, five guys downfield blocking for them. Your slow screens are your tunnel screens. I kind of consider, you know, to me, tunnel screens are slow screens because I release the same guys that I do in my slow screens. So, you know, we're going to release center guard, guard on each side in our slow screens to our running backs. And then when we run tunnels to our receivers, when we're actually going to bring them back down inside a little bit, not completely down inside, just inside a little bit, and then try and hit the alley, we're actually blocking that like a slow screen where we've got the first guard out is trying to run to the sidewalk or the sideline and kick out. The center, if he gets out second, or the guard, depending on who gets out second, is trying to turn up inside that block all right, and run the alley. And then the last player, center or guard, whoever gets out last, 
is trying to either wall somebody off or peel back and, and rat kill or clean up trash of anybody following the screen. So we run slow screens to running backs and tunnels to wide receiver the same way. So that's why I kind of group them together, you know, slow screens or tunnels. I know a lot of people may not consider it, you know, a tunnel a slow screen, but because I blocked them the same way, I've got them grouped together there, all right? And then your jailbreaks are when you're basically going to block absolutely nobody up front and you're going to release four to five linemen, you know, your middle, you know, maybe some people call them rockets or, you know, jailbreaks and middle screens where you're physically bringing a guy all the way down inside, you're letting all five guys or four guys up front rush, all you're doing is really just hi-hatting and flashing quick and then getting out and you're not putting a hand on anybody up front and you're trying to get all five linemen, you know, downfield somewhere on, on some type of landmark and you're bringing that wide receiver all the way under like a middle type screen would be a jailbreak, okay? And that's, you know, the term jailbreak really is what it is. You're letting everything through up front. You're not leaving any of your linemen on. You're letting every down lineman and blitzer rush the quarterback and you're trying to get your big guys and, you know, you're really almost setting that screen up to where you've got nine blockers other than the quarterback and the receiver. The other nine guys are physically involved trying to block, you know, that screen to where you get everybody on the field blocked. So it's a lot different than a stand-up or a now or a bubble where you're just trying to get the ball out wide to a playmaker in space. When you're running a jailbreak, you're physically trying to block that thing up to get everybody taken care of other than the guys that are rushing the passer. Okay, so... You know, just terminology-wise, just some different things for us, bubbles and leverage, stand-ups and now, slower tunnel and jailbreaks, okay? So that's just philosophically or, you know, terminology-wise, the differences in some of the screens you may see people running and, and, you know, when you see people talking about or you hear people talking about the screen game, those are some of the terms that you're going to hear, okay? So, all right, as we go through some of those, we'll draw up the first one, all right? We'll look at the bubble from three by one. Okay, we'll look at the bubble first from three by one, and then we'll talk about it as a possible, as a possible leverage scheme, how you could do it in your zone game, or you know. So, right, what you're basically talking about is taking a number three receiver. All right, you're going to have two helmets out there to block. The first two are the two most all right, dangerous defenders. And you're taking a receiver and you're bubbling him wide to the sideline all right, with a little bit of depth and width. So he's running away from all right, where the ball is. He's running to his outside, away from the ball, and he's running away from you know, seven or eight defenders that are on the field and trying to get the ball wide. All right, and normally in three by one, you're going to be in a situation where you feel like you have enough hats to handle the first two threats you push the ball wide and now he's going to have to make the third or possibly anything inside out, he's going to have to make those guys miss. So those would be typical bubble type screens where you're just going to grab that, the quarterback's going to grab that and just one step it and throw it wide, all right, and throw it quick. So you're pushing leverage, all right, and width, all right, outside. And, you know, you've got two different theories. You've got it to where based on coverage you think you know, I feel like they're playing some type of palms or quarters here with maybe the backside safety trying to trap three vertical here. So I feel like I can get the down outside backer in the corner blocked, all right? And if I can, when this corner triggers up, if I can get him blocked and I can get, you know, win the battle with the outside backer, now that's a long run for the free safety and Mike to have to tackle one of your best players in space that's running away from them. So normally in the bubble, you're going to get those two guys blocked, you're going to get with, and you're going to grip and rip that thing out wide right now. Okay, but you also have it to where, you know, and for us, I'll just show you briefly, what we would do is we would, we would slide the protection that way, all right, and we would gap it out to the side, we're throwing the bubble real quick, and then we would run like heck to cover, all right, so when we do drills on bubble screens with our linemen, we step and rip our gap, you know, and then what we do is we yell cover, cover, and now they're all running to the side of the bubble to see if they can cut anything off from the backside or clean up anything down the field because you know the ball is coming out of your hand on the bubble screen and within our terminology when we call bubble our linemen know that we're throwing bubble screen all right so you know when we use the code or the, the the word that we use for bubble our linemen hear that so they hear you know they hear bubble rip and they know we're throwing bubble to the right 
they know that it's rip protection, and then they're going to run like hell. They only got to you know protect for a second for the quarterback to get the ball out of his hands. Okay, and then usually we'll put our back opposite. All right, we put our back opposite. Now, if you were you know trying to throw it as a leverage type deal, all right, I'll show you at two back how you can do it, how some people are doing it. All right, if you were to try and throw it as a leverage type deal, you can throw it off your run game. All right, and there's a lot of teams that run the power play. All right and they throw the leverage screens off the apex defender in the box all right so now because i'll draw it up this way because we're a shotgun team you know what they're going to do is they're going to look at the defense and they're going to say okay you know how are they playing that number two receiver and what is the reaction of that apex player what is he doing All right, so what they're going to do is they're physically going to block the power play up front. All right, so they're physically, they're trying to block this play just like they're running regular power O, all right, inside. All right, they're trying to, they're trying to draw the hinge block a little bit better there. They're trying to run this like power O right here, okay? And then what they're doing is they're taking that seventh guy and they're reading him and saying, okay, does he want to fold into the box to play the power? Or does he want to widen when I run bubble by two? Okay. Now, if he's apexed in here, he's not even reading two. Two is going to be handled by the corner and the safety. So it's not like he's responsible for two to the flat. Okay. Especially if they're a two high team. Now, if they're a one high team, now it's a little bit of an issue because he might have to actually be the curl flat player. And now you get numbers out there. But if they're a two high team, this apex guy, what you're trying to do is find a way that you can get him to not stick his nose and fold into the run game all the time. So one way to do that is to leverage the bubble with the power, and now you're not reading the end. It's not power read on the end. You're not reading front side end or back side end. You're reading the apex linebacker's leverage, and as the quarterback all right, takes the snap, as the quarterback presents the ball to the running back, he's looking at the leverage. So now as I present the ball, if that guy folds, I just raise and throw the bubble. Okay? If that guy folds into the box to play the run as the seventh helmet, I can't block him, so I raise and throw the bubble. If he's got enough width or he stays out here, I've got numbers to block their six, so I just run the power play inside. we got the end blocked with the kick out. We're not reading them. So it's not a matter of whether the end closes or crashes or chases. It, it has nothing to do with that. We're kicking that end with the fullback. So we got those six blocked. All right, now we're trying to see what this extra guy Apex does. If he peeks his nose inside, we'll throw the ball. Okay? If he doesn't peek his nose inside, then we feel like we, we've got numbers in the run game. All right, so all we're doing is we're making this guy's job a little bit tougher, and then we're trying to help ourselves out. We're trying to get him out of the box by widening him with some leverage screens, okay? All right, and then at the same time, if we get him out of the box, then we're trying to equate our numbers so we can run the ball, you know, with the power play or whatever your two-back runs are. A lot of teams do it out of one back, and they leverage read that guy, and if he's in position to play the zone, they throw the bubble. If he can't play the zone and they have numbers, they just block and run the zone. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways to do it, but the leverage read would be on that player to see where his leverage is to throw the screen off of his leverage. Okay, so, you know, the bubble can be thrown and blocked easily as a bubble, all right, but the leverage screen would be thrown as something to read off the leverage of a defender to say, hey, peeks his nose inside, I'm throwing the screen. If he stays wide, I'm going to run to where I have numbers in the box on the power play. Okay. Now, you know, the stand-up screens, and this is some, just something that we do, we always try and get the running back, all right, we're always going to try and get the running back, all right, we're going to try and get the running back and the front side guard in the stand-up now screen. All right, so when we throw our stand-ups, Okay, we're going to try and get the running back out there if we can, all right? And then we're going to try and get the play side guard out there if we can. So it all depends on where you put the back, all right, where the back is. Right now I'm going to set them to this side, and we're just going to talk about the stand-up or the now screen. So all we're going to do is we're going to take number one, and we're going to go fast hands and feet, and then we're just going to flash our numbers right back to the quarterback, okay? We're going to take number two, and we're going to wheel him up on the corner right now. Okay, and then what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get the back out to the outside linebacker. Okay, 
The back is going to get back to the outside linebacker. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pass protect with everybody but the play side guard. Okay, and the play side guard is going to take his cleanest, quickest, freest release to get out and clean up anything that's left. So right now with a three technique, he's going to step, rip, a gap. So he's going to step, take that arm, grab grass, and rip, and turn and try and get out in front to clean up anything that's out there. If we break a tackle, like I said in, in the intro, he, he may not get out there a lot of times, but he's going to work to get out there because that one time he does, and we had it happen in a game this year, our wide receiver made a guy miss, makes one cut inside, and here comes the guard to get the safety or the outside backer. So if he does get out there, it's a bonus. If he doesn't, it's a stand-up now that you're throwing uncovered. A lot of guys throw it with nobody, just one receiver out there. Okay, so you're still going to get out of it what you want out of it, whether the guard gets out or not. We add the play side guard to make it a little bit more efficient as a cleanup guy. All right, we feel like the three technique, if we grip and rip this ball, we feel like the three technique all right, isn't going to get to the quarterback, so we don't feel like we have to block him, whether he's a three or a one. All right, so we just unchain that guy, and we take the freest, cleanest release. All right, if he was a one technique, all right, so if he was... If you add the one technique to that side, then the guard has the open B gap. Now he can just rip right now. He's got the open B gap. Now he can just step, rip, and run to get out in front because he's got an open B gap. Same thing if you were playing an odd front team, 3-3, three, 3-4, three, three, whatever the shade. If he's uncovered, now he's got a free, clean release. If he's covered, he's got to step, rip into the A gap. So he steps into the A gap. He grabs grass and gets real low with that shoulder and rips and then turns to run flat to try and see if he can clean anything up outside. Okay, so this would just be a stand-up screen for us. Okay, and and what we did last year because when we were in this formation, we had a fullback that was up here. So what we did last year is we motioned him out to get leverage on the sand. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways you can do it. There's a lot of different things you can do to get leverage. We motioned him out, and then we put him out on the sand. Okay, and then we always had off of this motion, we always had a screen and go or something we could do so that. Every time we motioned him, they couldn't just jump on the screen. So you always have to have a play that answers one of your plays and protects it. So we always had some type of screen and go built in there. But that would be a now or a stand up or you know another version. That for us, that's that's one of our now screens because we're physically trying to get helmets out there. We're trying to get the two, the the fullback and the guard out. So we really are kind of blocking it like a screen. All right, a stand up. You know, a, a, a stand-up or a now throw could also be, you know, let's say you're, you know, let's say you're, you know, you're two by two, and again, the apex player for them doesn't want to get outside the box. All right, he wants to stay in, he wants to hum the run the best he can. All right, so they're worried about your quarterback or they're worried about your running game, so he wants to stay almost not even apex out here. All right, and then maybe whether it's man to man, who knows? It's you know, it could be. A version of a two high coverage it could be man but you feel like there's nobody covering your number two receiver and you just take the ball and throw that stand up with him flashing his numbers right now okay so your stand ups and your nows they could be uncovered throws they could be you know you're making you're making you know and like Peyton Manning it could be an Omaha call it could be whatever saying hey I'm open right now nobody's covering me quarterback grabs it grips it and rips it just trying to make the defense expand and honor players in the formation so they can't get extra helmets on the run, okay? Or you might have some now screens like we just drew up where I'm physically trying to get two blockers out in front of that guy, not just throwing a stand-up out there, all right? So you have stand-ups and now screens, all right, which are, you know, two more versions of screens to get the ball quickly to the outside, out to your playmakers, all right? And, you know, like I, like I said before, could block it as a screen. You could be just gripping and ripping the ball out there to a guy that you think is better than a defender, and that defender's seven yards off. Okay. So you got bubbles and leverages, and then you got stand ups and nows. Okay. And then you got your slow screens, which would be your typical screens that have to develop off a of drop back passing. Okay. So they would be your typical tailback type screens. All right. That would develop off of some type of drop back passing look. All right, so maybe you're a split back, twins open, split back, two back team, and you know now maybe you're trying to find a way to slow down the pass rush, or you know you're trying to, you got an aggressive team that likes to blitz a little bit, or they're putting pressure on the quarterback, or their guys up front are getting off real good. 
So you want to slow down the pass rush, all right? You want to get the ball out to one of your best playmakers in space with a convoy or some lead blockers. So normally you're going to throw some type of slow screen off your drop back game, okay? Last, last blog, we talked about a package play where you actually have a drop back game with a slow screen, okay? You know, today, let's, we'll look at it a little bit different way and we'll say, okay, let's run a flare screen to one side with a slow screen to the other, all right? So maybe to this side, we're going to block, block, and we're going to take this tail back and we're going to rip him out here for the flare, and we're going to take a peek maybe at that Mike linebacker to see how he handles it or the spin of the safeties to see how they handle it, okay? And then... When we're running slows or tunnels, we're going to leave the tackles on, and we're going to use center guard center, okay? So we're going to leave the tackles on, and now what we're going to do is we're going to get this guard, all right, to this side, maybe we'll say, okay, let's go and crack with the single, all right, and then let's get this guard out to the sidewalk, let's try and get the center out to the alley, and then let's try and get the backside guard out to either wall or clean up on the backside, let's step him up for protection. 1,001, 1,002, and then let's leak him out late over here, okay? So that would be a version of your slow screen. It could be a predetermined slow screen that you call, all right, where you know you're throwing a screen to the tailback. It could be a double screen where maybe, you know, you might be running something where, you know, I've seen some teams where they're running stuff where they get all their linemen out, you know, and maybe you're running double screens where on this side you're just setting this and getting out in front, for this tailback, but on this side, these are the three guys running the screen on this side, so the quarterback has options to where you've got a flare screen to the right with a slow screen to the left. There's a lot of different ways you can do those things, but in general, your slow screen is going to be the one that develops off a of drop back passing. You're probably going to leave some of your linemen on, and some of your linemen are going to get out in front, and you're physically trying to block that as, you know, you're trying to get things blocked out here. You're not just ripping it to somebody and hoping they're better. Or, or just trying to get a defense to widen. When you're running this play, you're physically trying to block it as a screen play. Normally, it's used to slow down a pass rush or to, or to combat the blitz a little bit. Okay? So, you know, again, your slow screen would be the ones that take time to develop. That's why they're called slow screens. You're going to pull more linemen to get them out there to actually block it. I refer to it as a tunnel screen, and the reason I do that is because we do it at a two-by-two, two, and we actually bring the receiver back down inside a little bit. You know, so we'll do the same theory. All right, we'll be in two by two. All right, and it'll be the same type theory where we're going to get something going on the front side. All right, so we'll have something generated on the front side, and then on the back side, we're going to set up a tunnel, okay, on the back side of that. All right, so, you know, maybe for argument's sake, we're running, you know, we might be running some type of, uh, you know, for instance, we could be, we could be going, I don't want to necessarily say shallow cross because I wouldn't bring the shallow, you know, all the way over to the side that I was throwing the screen, but, you know, let's say for argument's sake we're running some type of sit package where we're going shallow in through here, and then we're going to read some type of seam read to where this guy's either going to take the seam, all right, or he might be bringing it back across here, all right, and then we're working the tailback out on the front side. So we're working a front side concept and reading off the coverage that we got on the front. So maybe we're trying to get this shallow cross coming in here, seeing what the mic does or if they cut it or if they collision it. All right, if the mic plays this, then maybe we're trying to open up the dig or that window behind it. Maybe against one high, we're trying to get a seam read throw up the chute, okay? But on the back of that, we're tagging it with what I would call, you know, my version of a tunnel because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and now instead of just flashing like the stand up or the now, I'm physically going to bring him back down inside, all right, because I'm trying to get out alley wall. So I'm trying to bring this receiver down to where this screen, I actually want to get it somewhere back down in here. So instead of just fast hands and feet and flash, I'm physically going to fast hands and feet and bring him back down towards the ball so that when he catches it, I'm trying to give him this window here with some blockers with a kick out block and an alley block where now when he catches this, we can turn it up in there. So I consider, you know, that version of a tunnel screen, all right, 
that version of a tunnel screen, I consider that a tunnel for me and a slow screen because we block it just like our slow screen, but we kind of bring that wide receiver back down to get them up in that tunnel. Now, that doesn't mean that tunnel screens are the same for everybody. You know, some people consider tunnels, maybe they're jailbreaks. Terminology in football can get confusing because a lot of people call the same plays or the same things different names, so people get confused. I work it as a tunnel just because of the path of the receiver, but it's also a slow screen for me because I block it the same with my line. So once I have a slow screen put in, I can also put a tunnel screen in because I block them the same way. Okay. The last one would be a full jailbreak. And that would be where you're trying to basically not touch anybody up front. All right, so the full jailbreak would just be a show and go, okay, where you're trying to, you know, basically block nobody up front. All right, your linemen are physically almost not going to get a hand on anybody up front. You're going to just let them all go. All right, and then you're physically, this is, for me, this is a middle screen theory. This is where that receiver's got to come all the way down inside, okay? So, you know, what you could do off your bubble stuff is you could set up bubble screen on this side here with leverage here, all right? And then you're setting up the middle screen on the back side now, all right? And your linemen, all your linemen are going to do now is they're just going to flash and go, flash and go, flash and go, flash and go flash, and go. Okay, and again, on screens, I think landmarks are a better way to teach your linemen. So here's an easy way, you know, on the, on the jailbreaks or the middles like this, what we try and do is we try and tell this guy, hey, look, you work to the hash, you work to the upright, center work the goal post, you work the upright, okay, you work the hash. So they now have a landmark. Whatever, whatever shows up in that landmark, block it. So don't run for the Mike, the Sam, the Will, the down safety, the rover, the whip, the dog, the free, the strong, the jack. Don't teach all your kids to worry about all that. Tell your lineman to run the landmarks. Your tackles work to the hash mark. Your guards work to the uprights. Your center works to the goalpost. Okay? And now you're physically trying to get a receiver down inside to where he's going to get the football a little bit closer to the tackle box and now you're trying to turn that thing up somewhere on the inside of the field and what you're doing away from the bubble you're trying to go I'm sorry away from the jailbreak you're going bubble to see if you can get these guys to expand with the bubble and run to the bubble so that now when you hit the middle they're running away from and a lot of times what you can do is you can peek or you know you might throw the bubble with leverage or you might peek and pump it to where you take it, grip it and rip it, and pump the bubble, and then come back and throw the middle screen to the other side. So you get the defense to kind of move with the bubble and then sneak that middle screen coming back. All right. I like to do it with two receivers so that somebody can protect. If it's a press cover two corner or a man corner, I like to have somebody that can pick and protect if that corner wants to follow that receiver coming in. Okay. Up front, we like to get high hat, high pad level flash it as quick as we can, but then we're going. We're not getting hands on. It's not 1-1,000, 2 1, throw and go. It's flash and get out and hope they rush the passer. Okay? So again, you know, those are just some of the theories for us in our screen game, you know, how we, how we do some things. Uh, but keep in mind with the screen game, number one, you got to work it if you're going to be good at it. Number two, understand the type of philosophy, all right, that you are as an offense, as an up-tempo guy, all right, I know that we're never going to be the best screen team in the world because if I'm playing at the right tempo, I'm not going to be able to screen guys later in the game because they shouldn't be getting that great of a pass rush. You know, in high school football, we don't have teams that can play 8 to 10 defensive linemen. So those same 4 to 5 defensive linemen we see all game, we've been seeing them all game. I would say in 80% of the states across the country, those same 4 or 5 D linemen are also the same 4 or 5 O linemen, so they've been playing the entire game. So if you're up-tempo and you've got the pace jacked up and those four or five guys are playing 70 snaps a game, they don't have the same pass rush in the third and fourth quarter. So your screens, especially your slows and maybe your jailbreaks, you can still throw your bubbles wide because you're not really you know, counting on a pass rush. But if you're throwing slow screens or jailbreaks and, and you're counting on them rushing the passer, you know, you're not gonna, an up-tempo team is not going to be that great at slow or jailbreaks in the third and fourth quarter. And if you are... All right, either that other team has some real, real good cats, 
or your tempo isn't anywhere near what you think it is, so maybe you need to reevaluate your offense because if they still can rush the passer in the third and fourth quarter with the same vigor, you know, and the same energy that they had in the first quarter, then your tempo must not be real good. Okay, so philosophically, just understand who you are as an offense. If you're going to be a jailbreak slow screen team, you better have a drop back passing game. If everything you do <coughs> is getting the ball out of your hand quick, you're never going to be able to set up a slow screen, all right, or you're never going to be, be able to set up a jailbreak screen because you never drop back pass. All right? I used to get a kick out of watching teams that would run draws but never throw a drop back pass. So anytime the quarterback even put the ball up and started to drop, you knew it was draw right away because they never threw a drop back pass. It's the same thing within the screen theory. If you don't physically drop back and five step pass, you're going to have a hard time running slower jailbreak screens. Who's going to rush the passer when you never drop back pass? So again, philosophically keep those things in mind. Another thing to keep in mind when you're running slows and jailbreaks, try not to double team anybody up front. The worst thing you can get, all right, when you're running a slow screen or jailbreak, jailbreak screen is a defender that is stoned at the line of scrimmage. So if you've got one technique and your center and your guard stone that one technique at the line, that's not good for your screen game, okay? You want one-on-one -on -one matchups to make that defender think like he's beating the guy to get to the quarterback so that you can throw him and go when you're running slows and jailbreaks, okay? When you're throwing, you know, bubbles, bubble screens, leverage screens, stand-ups, nows, you're not really worried about what's going on up front. You're gripping and ripping to the outside, so don't worry about whether you double-team or stone somebody, all right? But one of the big selling points for me with our offensive linemen, when we're running slow screens or jailbreaks, not only do we talk about selling and hi-hatting and setting and selling the pass, but we talk about not dominating somebody up front because if you dominate them, then you don't get a pass rush. You know, you've got to be a salesman on a screen. So you've got to set a guy, you've got to get a one-on-one -on -one matchup and make that guy think like he's winning so that when you throw him to the quarterback, he's excited about getting to the quarterback and now he does what you want him to do so you throw the screen over his head. All right, you get guys, you know, your center and guard just whip the one technique of the line. He doesn't rush the passer. He's standing there on the slows, and so now when that guard stones him and releases, he gets in his hip pocket and he runs, okay? Try to keep your tackles on to the best of your ability when you're running slows or jailbreaks. You want the defensive ends rushing the passer. The only way they rush the passer is if they're getting continuous pass sets. If your tackle or, you know, maybe on quicks and stand-ups you can do it, but on slows and, and jailbreaks, okay, the jailbreaks, you're not going to touch a soul, so you don't even worry about it. But on your slow screens, keep in mind, you don't want to set that end and then use that tackle to get out there because if that end retraces, you've got a dead play. So when you're running slow screens, keep your tackles on. When you're running jailbreaks, send all five of them. When you're running quick screens or stand-ups, it really doesn't matter what you do up front. Okay? Like everything else on offense, you better work at it if you want to get good at it. All right? Beginning of the video, I told you I, that's one of the reasons I don't think we were as good in the screen game as we could have been. I don't think I did a good enough job as, as a head coach and coordinator spending the time we needed in periods. Got to have a period with your linemen where they know what to do. Your outside skill players got to know how to block bubbles and stand-ups. And your player that receives the screen has to understand the type of screen and the type of block. You got to know where the alleys and, and you know, guys got to know how to run a tunnel. Receivers have to have a knack for coming inside and knowing how to run the tunnel. They got to know when they run the stand-up the way we're blocking it so that they stay where they belong and they don't come ripping inside on a stand-up. I don't have any block, anybody blocking. You need a good receiver that understands middle screens and jailbreaks, that knows how to get down in there and come all the way across. So, you know, you need quarterbacks that understand how to throw screens and understand how to sell them. You need linemen that can sell them and that can get out there and block people. And then you need skill players that can block the perimeter and understand if they're the target of the screen, how it's being blocked and where we're going to hit them. So all those things need to be practiced. They need to be worked on if you're going to get good at them. Okay? All right? As an up-tempo team, screen early and screen often and make defensive linemen run side to side. If you're an up-tempo team, try not to screen late. Don't get yourself caught calling bad plays when you're screening a team on a seven-play drive and a seven-play you've been up-tempo. And that seven-play, they probably don't have gas left. You may not want to screen or draw that team. Okay? So just keep those things in mind. Hopefully this helps with your screen game. Like I said, we haven't been the best screen team in the world. I'm not going to lie and put it out there and, and make it like our screens are the best. We've been good at it. We've been real good at it at times. We've been bad at it at times. But at the end of the day, I think our screen game has been effective enough with our tempo package to get the ball into the player's hands. We need to get it in, to take some pressure off our alignment with the pass rush, 
and to effectively, all right, um, you know, create some havoc on those defensive linemen and linebackers having to run sideline to sideline and then coming back to run another play in 15 seconds. I think in the second half, our screen game, all right, may not have been huge plays in the first half, but I think later in the games we were able to run the ball and block some people because of what we did in the first half. All right, as always, guys, remember, you won't play well until you play fast. I'll catch you next time.